Welcome back for another video. Today's video, I'm gonna show you how to build a super simple filter using a 15 gallon bucket. Here's everything that I'll be using to build the filter. So first off is a 15 gallon drum or bucket. I bought this off of Craigslist for like 10 or 20 bucks, something like that a while ago. You can get it off of Amazon, but it is pricey. Otherwise it is basically just a watertight bucket, which is 15 gallons. Definitely get it, recommend getting it secondhand. This one is food grade. I forget what it contained in there some uh, food product otherwise to drill the holes in here you'll need a drill of course i have two different hole saws this one's a one and three quarter and then i believe this one's a two and a half for two different bulkheads this one goes for a one inch bulkhead fitting and then this guy's going to go for a two inch bulkhead fitting and then because my hole saw thing is broken this uh bit right here doesn't attach to it basically i'll be using this to drill a pilot hole so i can get it started and then for filtration i have some filter floss over here and then two bags of K2 Biomedia. So you can see that in there. This will act as good filtration. The media basically looks like this stuff right here. It's K2 media. And then I have a bunch of two inch PVC pipe, which you'll see what I'll be using that for. Some Teflon tape, another two inch piece, a 90. And then I have a one inch threaded 90, a one inch nipple, another one inch nipple, a one inch ball valve which threads as well then you have a uh, one inch from male threads to female threads and then for my purposes i am going to be using a garden hose adapter just for how it's going to be set up so the first thing that i'll do is drill the holes into the bucket so as i mentioned because my hole saw doesn't work right so this specific piece just rotates in here i can't get it to start so i'll be using a smaller bit to drill the pilot hole one at the bottom and then one at the top. So we got that guy right there. And then this is on the opposite side. We get one here at the top. So after we got those at the top, I'm going to be putting a two inch ball valve. I mean bulkhead. Like so. So I'll be using this. Pretty sure this is two and a half. Has no labels on it. But this will be to get the two inch ball valve in there. Bulkhead, I mean. Don't know why I keep saying ball valve. So now this is the one and three quarter for the one inch bulkhead fitting. So actually I should have drilled a bigger hole here because this just spins in there. So I just gotta push until I basically get it through. But if you have like a working, a working uh, hole saw, then you don't gotta deal with this. So you can go both reverse or normal. This will be normal, sometimes it binds. Reverse goes a little slower, but it goes through a little smoother sometimes. Now that we got the holes drilled, which are the only two holes that you're gonna be drilling in this bucket, we can start to assemble it. If you want to actually, before you do that, you can scrape away all this stuff on here with a knife or whatever. Otherwise, it should be fine. So we got those two holes. So I mentioned at the top, we'll be putting a two inch bulkhead fitting. This guy's got reverse threads. So basically, if you're new to bulkheads, when it comes to installing them, this guy's got two pieces. There's a rubber gasket on them. As long as you have it on this side of the bulkhead fitting, you can stick it in whichever way you want this rubber gasket same on this smaller one this is a one inch same thing it's a little different in terms of the bulkhead it's got this rubber gasket as long as it's on this fixed side you can stick it on whichever side if you put the gasket on this side of the bucket when you do it for example say you put it like this then that could cause a, a little more leaking. So, first I'm gonna stick this guy in through here. This guy's got an extra piece which basically allows it to evenly clamp. And then we'll get this guy on here. So typically hand tightening these is good enough. If you do need to yank, crank on it with a, uh, a wrench or anything, you can, otherwise most of the time hand and tightening is good enough. So we got that two inch one on there, and we'll put the one inch at the bottom. Again, you wanna make sure we get that gasket on the right side. 
And then we'll stick this guy through the bottom. So this one I might need to use a wrench just because it's harder to grab onto. So we got that guy in there. So we got those two pieces, which is the two inch at the top and the one inch at the bottom. All right, now to put the filtration in here, the first thing we'll be putting in is these pieces of two inch pipe. You can use inch and a half if you wanted to, but two inches, I just had a bunch of these lying around. Basically, these are just to put a gap at the bottom between where the water comes in and where the media is. So it'll just be like that. Basically a layer at the bottom. Then we'll put these bags of K2 media at the bottom. Get them as flat as we can. We got two of them. After this, I'm gonna put the filter floss in here. There is still space to put like extra stuff if you wanted to. Get like some more sponges or whatnot. So I'll stick this in here. And basically the, the, K, the K2 media, I'm not gonna need to replace, but this filter floss, I will have to replace just because it's gonna get clogged up and everything. So this will get a lot of the gunk out of there. Don't wanna clog that. So we got that in there now. To prevent this from possibly clogging this hole, you can put like a brick on top. Otherwise, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put some extra pipes in here. So we got this piece right here, and then this guy, which is gonna raise the water level in the bucket, but I still got plenty of room. I'm probably still gonna put some rocks in here just to prevent this from getting up. So we got that guy in there, I will screw this down more. And then on the output over here, all I'm gonna be adding for my setup is just a T, and then this piece of pipe right here. And then for the water coming into the filter, which is to this one inch bulkhead fitting, I'm gonna be using this assembly right here. I'll just be attaching them using the Teflon tape. And that's how the water will enter. Make sure you get the Teflon tape on the right way so it doesn't leak or anything. Here's how the final filter looks like. You got the water coming in here. It goes up through all the media, through the filter floss, and then out through this pipe over here back into the pond area. This stuff is all angled just because of how the bucket is. So if you wanted a little more uniformity or straightness, then you would have to stick it uh, through this area and then just go down with the pipe or whatever. But it doesn't really matter. You can always adapt to it. So now to hook it up to the grow bed over there, all I have to do is attach a garden hose. So for mine, I'm gonna be attaching a garden hose to this guy right here. Here's the filter. It's in this grow bed right here. I don't have to worry about it leaking or anything because the water's just gonna go into here. But basically the water goes from a pump that's in the pond over there, which I'll show you. This is gonna be like temporary until I move this thing and then I'll probably do some other sort of filtration here, maybe a back shower or something like that. Basically the water goes from the pond over here, which is gonna need some work. This thing is completely falling down, but basically it comes from this pump over here. You would wanna actually put a check valve on here. I just don't have one and I don't wanna buy one at the moment so that the water doesn't come back or back wash into here when say the power goes off or I unplug this, the water's just gonna go straight from that filter back into the pond. So you do wanna put a check valve over down here or somewhere over there, it doesn't really matter. And then the green, house, green hose goes to that filter over there and this black one goes to the DWC over there. I don't have a filter on this one just because it's a DWC, but because that one's into the lava rock, I do have a filter on it. But the water starts from here, goes to the filter, then comes out over there. Here's the inside of the filter. So I got these two bricks in here basically to hold everything down because it's floating up. And then the water goes through the media at the bottom, then through this filter sponge, which you can see is actually catching a bunch of stuff already. Water might be too strong, so I can turn it down with the, the valve over here. Otherwise, you do want to put a check valve, as I mentioned, what's going to happen if the water turns off is the water is just going to siphon out through this hose and back into the pond. So all the gunk's going to go through there. So check valve is recommended. I don't have one, so I'm not going to put one on here since this is a temporary until I get to uh, setting the other stuff up. Then for cleaning it, it's fairly simple. All you gotta do, since I have water going into two different spots, is turn off that valve basically, and then I'll just pull out every, all the stuff, pull out the, the filter floss, either rinse that out and reuse it, and then I got the media at the bottom down there, which I'll pull out, rinse the bags, and then put them back in. So fairly simple to clean, easy to set up, and we'll do a decent job. Well, that about sums up this video. If you did like this one, remember to check out one of my other videos up here, and I'll see you in the next one.